Hello everyone, welcome back to Fujisun Jr. Today, I will be eating this uh, chicken sandwich place called Bird Code and just talk about how I became a teacher. Yeah, so this is my first time trying this their food. And I heard good reviews about it, so I'm excited to um, devour this because I'm a little hungry. I didn't have dinner, but because I just finished my first three days of school for teaching, I thought it would be really cool to just get my, treat myself nicely. I also had a coupon for DoorDash, so it just worked out perfectly. All right. So I'm just going to be eating and just talking about how I became a teacher. So... All right. Wow. That's just humongous. I got myself a chicken sandwich. And I got myself some regular fries with their sauce that, oh, I don't know what sauce this is, but looks like their uh, own traditional sauce. So I'm excited to try this out. Mm, not bad. All right, did I go last? So um, originally I became a teacher because well, one, my dad was a big influence in my life in becoming a teacher. He's also a teacher as well. He teaches Japanese. He used to teach at my international school growing up. And that's how I kind of wanted to go into the educational field. Yeah. All right, let me take my first bite. Mmm, not bad. I might need the sauce on it a little though. But yeah, that's like the number reason why um, I wanted to become a teacher as well. Also, I had experience uh, doing summer school back in Japan, also tutoring and just working with little kids. And I thought that it was the right occupation for me, especially since I enjoyed teaching students is elementary school so that's why I wanted to pursue my career in education and this is actually really good by the way so there's like different spices and I just got the country which is like no no spice because I'm, my spice tolerance is not that high, but you can obviously get like spicy, medium, mild, all that too. Yeah, um, so I went to UConn for college. Actually, my first two years, I was actually a physics, actually my first year, was, I was a physics major. Then I went undecided. And then junior year, I thought it was appropriate for me to uh, apply for the educational program at UConn. And thankfully I got in. Then my student teaching in a district in East Hartford, this is in Connecticut by the way, did my master's in Mansfield and now I work at a new district as a third grade teacher and this is my second year teaching. And so far it's going all uh, great, you know, it's awesome. Love my new group of students, miss my old group as well, but, you know, the only can just teach them once unless you change grades but you know it's good to see them at school and also it's also nice to have a refreshing group of students and working with them you know but teaching you know it's not the most stable job I can I should say with the especially with the pay and I guess with nowadays students being like exposed with technology and how they act compared to like the old days teachers usually quit after like three to five years if not ten years or that's like that's statistically it's like proven or shown that teachers quit after that certain amount of years. And I can see that, honestly. Mm. 
if they can really um, deal or handle students. And if it stresses them out, then like it's not the job that they should be continuing because it's not like every day is going to be a good day. There are going to be days that are going to be stressful that won't go your way. And I feel like that's just for all jobs as well. Also, the responsibility is huge as a teacher, you know. You have a certain number of students. This year I have 19. Odd number, which kind of sucks, but can't complain. And what was I trying to say? <laughs> Food is so so good that, well, it's not so good, but it's good. But yeah, I mean, it could be it could be stressful. I mean, last year there were a lot of times where I was stressed out, especially it was my first year as well. Like there was a lot of learning curves, ups and downs, and for me to grow as an educator, and the pressure was a lot because I didn't want to disappoint the parents, I didn't want to disappoint myself and my coworkers. And I know I'm st I was still learning, it was my first year, but it's still hard, you know, like to be a good teacher. And obviously I'm still gonna be learning. And that's the fun part of being an educator that you as a person will be learning as well, growing, figuring out how to interact, how to teach, how to organize, manage, all those things, you know. It's a tough job, and I respect teachers that have been that's been in the field for like twenty plus years. I don't know. We'll see if I'll be in the field of education for more than ten years. That really depends on where I am in life and how I'm feeling. And yeah, I mean, I have no regrets going to the field of education. Yeah, we do have breaks as well, which helps us a lot. And I think that's why our pay is a little lower as well. Because it's not a your job, your, your job, like a year-round job that's what i meant you know you have your summer breaks you get like 10 days of winter break and like other holidays so it makes sense but still like unless you're in the field for a long time like your, your first couple years are not going to be as good compared to like other jobs But at the same time, it's such a rewarding job. Because you get to see your students grow, both as learners and as a person. And then last year, I think I did a really good job trying to get my students to become closer to one another, building those social skills because of the COVID year that they missed, like, they didn't get that exposure at school and during kindergarten. And it's important that these students at a younger age learn how to interact with one another because in life, that's like one of the most important skills that you will need in order to get along, you know. And of course, like I, was strict and I think I'm a pretty strict teacher regarding to like the curriculum and like their education. Like I try to make sure that they put in the effort to get things done properly as well. Of course, the quality of quantity, but I didn't let things slide. I 
talk face to face and I pointed out if things are not done correctly and I wasn't afraid of doing that. And yeah, reputation matters a lot as a teacher. Like I, I would love my students to love me, but I, I was, in the back of my mind, I also had the vision of myself not getting liked by my students just because I was more educational, discipline driven for them. And it comes out like strict and harsh. And they're only eight and nine years old. So it's like tough for them to like deal with the things that I say sometimes or the tone or the workload that I give. But I promise them for sure that <clears throat> if they get through my class for a year, they wouldn't struggle at least in fourth and fifth grade because the workload that I give gave, especially with writing and stuff, and all the hard work that I told them to do without breaks, like they got that stamina in them and they've done a lot of practice and they're exposed to what fourth and fifth grade would be like at, in third grade, which I don't know if it's the best way to teach really, but I thought that was the appropriate way to deal with my students or how to navigate and proceed in my uh, teaching. and. Honestly, I thought it worked out because at the end of the year, they had a year test and they did really well. All my students actually improved. And obviously like not all students were at the expected level that I wanted to, but they showed they still showed improvement compared to the beginning of the year, which is what matters the most. And that made me happy, of course, one with the results, but two, seeing them learn do better and knowing that my teaching was effective on them and I gave them my free time as well of course like I was a fun teacher during the school during the school I'll be like strict of course I'll be professional I don't tolerate any BS and stuff but oh there's a car honking but like during lunchtime, or I guess more recess, during recess, during dismissal, when school's not really in session, that was fun. Like I played with them, I had a banter, you know, joked around, you know, related with them. And I showed the fun side of me as well. And no offense, but I think I was like the only teacher that actually try to play with them, like outside during recess, like, you know, try to get along. <laughs> and yeah, no, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I played basketball, playing tag with them. And none of the teachers at our school really does that. And obviously you're, you're supposed to be doing like recess duty, but you know, I kind of <laughs> break those rules and I just try to play with the kids. But it's like important that you show your like, you know, side of like, you know, fun a little bit of immaturity you know and try to relate with what they like to do and i have teachers in my school that are just like they're actually everyone everyone besides me they're actually so good at like building relationships without having to do all of that you know they can be fun they can make their curriculums lessons in a way that it's like fun and engaging and i think i'm still learning that as a new teacher so like my tricks were to like build relationships through those like outside of like teaching times, you know, and that really worked out. And yeah. I mean, I have all my students come up to me from last year. They usually give me a high five, fist bump. I used to, I love giving fist bumps to them. That's like my go-to thing with my students. Some of them will like just run up to me, you know. But they they still remember me and they give me, they smile when they see me. They're excited, and that makes me happy as well because the worry that I had behind me with like you know, oh, they might hate me. They might think I'm not a good teacher because I'm like strict on them, harsh on them. They still understood that I was doing that for a reason 
and they knew that the behaviors have to go or they, the behaviors have to be improved you know they had to do their work in order to actually do better in school and i did it in a way so that they will still like me i guess i don't know it's really hard to explain but i'm just glad that they still like me my old my first year group And I was worried, like, literally, like, and I was, like, really exhausted after my first year ended just because everything was new. I finally finished. I'm still puzzled, like, confused with things that I'll need to do next year. And all that stress was in the mood. And sometimes I thought, like, the group that I had was, like, very tough. I was like, is teaching actually really the job that I really want to do? But... Later on in like August, before my second year, I started to miss them a lot, even more than I did at the beginning of the summer. And I'm just so glad that I get to see them again. And for this year's group, very new group, different dynamic. Behavior definitely, the starting, so far so good, but and obviously, like, they have, they have their goods and bads in my second year, too. Like, we'll have to get into our routines, drill them with the expectations, be exposed with all that, so that they know their boundaries, they know their rules. And I'm going to try to continue doing that and try to help them. And I told them as well on the first day that I don't take any whining. I'm, I don't take any disrespect. I don't want anyone to be arguing with each other in class. I said that as much as their education matters a lot, I care more about the behaviors in class. because you can learn eventually with like academics and stuff. Yeah, er the earlier you learn, the better it is because when kids are you know, developing, their brains are more flexible. So they take in more information easier compared to when you become an adult. And it is proven as well, which means like behavior wise as well, like how you interact, the social skills, like it's important to teach that at a younger age. And I want them to know that that's more important for me than them actually doing well. And like, that sounds like kind of messed up, but, but yeah, I want them to do better in their academics. Of course, that's where they're going to school. But for me personally, I want their behaviors and their how, you know, how they work with each other to be more prioritized for me and for them just so that in life when they grow up, and when they are in high school, college, they're comfortable with meeting new people, talking with people that they might not vibe with or they might not feel comfortable with, but still figuring out strategies and how to interact with those people. And I think that's very important in life. And I want to continuously focus on that. And become a better educator, you know. You know I was talking to my math and reading teachers or coaches that are in my school. Because my, I guess read like more like language arts. Language arts and Math are the two biggest subjects that we're t we teach in elementary school. <laughs> I told them already. I have to look back at the curriculum because 
I pretty much forgot everything that I taught. And I guess it's still not built in me, like the routines and everything, because first year was just like learning and familiarizing with everything. And year two is more like trying to edit, like fix that, modify that, so that my, for my third year, I have something going on. But with a new group of kids and things that are changing, like my schedule changed this year. And honestly, I like my old schedule more, but you know, like you can't come, you know, you can't do anything about it. So <laughs> you just gotta modify your thing, your routines and stuff with the new schedule. And yeah, it's just like all the things I taught is like, literally like, I just don't remember. So I gotta look back at everything and they're like, don't worry, you know, they're, you know, we're here for you. And once you get in your routine, you're familiarized with everything. And that's like another thing about teaching that you really want to consider. It's like the people who you work with. I'm also going to really full. This chicken sandwich is actually humongous. But if you're not working in an environment where people want to help you or are supportive, you're just not going to enjoy your time working, you know, especially with teaching where it's literally the job for you to like be interacting with others and working with each other. If you can't do that, or if you don't have people around you that does that for you, then, you know, is it really the right place to be working? The school I work at, amazing. Literally from day one. Actually, before I before even day one started, I had like a three day tour when I walked around the school. Literally every teacher or majority of teacher were very supportive and kind and friendly. They're like, well, welcome, you know, we're excited to have you, you know, ask questions if you need it. And, you know, like I sometimes hesitate asking questions to my coworkers because in fact, because like, there, there's a lot of things that I do not know and I need to keep asking. And sometimes I feel like I'm bothering them. But because with this group, I've been really selfish. I go up and ask them whenever I need help. And I'm so grateful for the people that, or with the people I work with. Because like majority of them are just really kind people and helpful. Some of them I don't really talk to just because like we, we're not in the same grade or we're not on the same floor or whatever. But the people I've talked to and worked with, they've all been like wonderful. And I want to be that type of teacher as well. Well, I'm like, I can help others as well. There's a new teacher this year. Uh, she just joined from, actually from UConn as well. So I want to make sure that I can help her if she needs anything. But also like my new team members as well, because we have two new third grade uh, members in our team, like in our uh, team, yeah. And I mean, not that I can really help because I'm still learning, but if there's anything that, if they need anything, of course, like I want to make sure that I can help them, like, you know, try to give advice or try to work with them so that we can figure out the solutions. And that's the beauty of teaching as well, like compared to other jobs, like, you're just constantly interacting and learning new things. And yeah, these skills are might only apply in the field of education or at school, but like how to interact with others and like, you know, how to figure things out. It's just such an important like skill to have. And, you know, like I think that overall the way I interact with people have definitely changed compared to when I was in like high school and even in college as well, like a couple, like the first two years, like, excuse me, I became much more open much more thoughtful, flexible, and definitely more honest as well with how I feel.
Yeah. Alright, I'm just grateful. And I think I chose, I made the right decision becoming a teacher. I sometimes complain about it, of course. But there's so much more hands on as well. Uh, I do more things than probably like when you're at like a desk job or something. And we need more educators in general, you know, for the future generation. I feel like teaching is such an important job. And you help a lot of people. And I feel like in well, in general, I feel like teacher teaching is such an underappreciated job. And people sometimes look down at it. But like we work our butts off, like honestly. I feel like Without really experiencing it, people will not know how tough it is. And that's for all jobs, you know, you can say that for any other job. But, I mean, working with students, you know, you have so much responsibility. You have so much uh, expectations. And yeah, it's a, it's a tough but wonderful job, you know. Rewarding job for sure. I'm so excited for my group this year as well seeing how they develop, how they grow as people or humans. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much how or why I became a teacher and my journey to becoming a teacher as well. Like, I guess there's more if I, have, if I want to talk about, but that's like pretty much like the main important points. Yeah, I'm just glad that I became a teacher. I'm gonna continue changing students' lives, leaving a great impact, a positive one for sure. And hopefully I'll have another successful year. So if you guys liked it, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you live in Connecticut, you guys should try Bird Code. I'll give it a solid eight out of 10. And yeah, like and subscribe.